Hello YouTube friends, today I'm reacting to food theories, they're stealing our food. I don't know who they are, and I don't know how, but let's find out. Someone is stealing from you right now, literally taking money out of your pocket without you even realizing it. In fact, many food companies are trying to hide this fact from you through deceptive packaging that ranges from mildly misleading to outright lying directly to your face. And if all of us aren't careful, these methods are going to become permanent on grocery store shelves. But by recognizing them, and more importantly raising awareness of them, we can stop the spread. So listen up theorists, it's time to catch some thieves red handed. Internet. Welcome to Food Theory, where today it's WOGO Day. Watch one, get one free. Watch this video about how the food on grocery store shelves are trying to cheat you out of your money, and then you get this free episode thrown in about how the grocery stores themselves are trying to cheat you out of money for no extra charge. In a world where everyone's trying to squeeze every last buck out of your wallet, some free online entertainment is pretty much the best deal that you're gonna get. So according to reports from March, inflation in the US is higher now than it's been at any point in the past 40 years. Like it or not, things are getting more expensive, and that sucks. But you know what sucks more? When the prices don't go up. Now, that might seem counterintuitive, but let me explain. You see, some companies in the food space have figured out a sneaky way to cash in without raising their prices. It's an insidious trick known as shrinkflation. A trick where you pay the same old price that you always have, but you end up getting a smaller product without ever realizing it. And it's the long-term effects of this that make it all the more dangerous. One of my favorite demonstrations of this came on late night TV back in 2007 when BJ Novak of The Office noticed that Cadbury eggs seemed to be getting smaller. I buy my Cadbury eggs this year. They feel smaller than they used to be. Something is up. I look through all the cabinets in my house. I find a Cadbury cream egg from a couple years ago and I brought it. This is this year's egg. Yes. This is the egg from oh, a couple wow. years ago. <laughs> look at that. Judge for yourself, America. So there you have it. Smoking gun <laughs> clear as crisp. <laughs> I love just, yeah. No, I love how dramatized this is. It is a real thing, and I remember feeling this way as a consumer, as a kid, when we were getting ice cream, and my mom and I noticed that the container sizes were getting smaller. And it is a very real feeling as a consumer, just like, oh my gosh, I am being cheated out of this. <laughs> but... It is something that companies do and legally can because they're still disclosing the ounceage or grams. Anyway, the net weight of the food is still being disclosed on the packaging. So technically they're not being deceitful, but they are shrinking things so that we're paying for the same thing without necessarily realizing we're paying for less. The eggs were getting smaller, but the most outlandish part of the whole story is that Cadbury actually tried to deny that this is what they were doing. You go to the main Cadbury website, it says on the front page, no, they have not gotten smaller, you've gotten bigger. They were literally gaslighting anyone who noticed the trend. It's not us, it's you, lol. That was a ballsy move there, Cadbury, ballsy move. Of course, they knew they couldn't keep getting away with it after being publicly called out, so they changed their about page on the website from this archived version, why have the size of the eggs changed, it hasn't, you just grew up, to this, quote, since people's preferences vary from market to market, so do our products. Basically an explanation that amounts to, we made the eggs smaller and we thought we could get away with it by lying to you until we were called out on national TV. This, my friend. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, but that is shady, like the lying about it, which... <laughs> You know, there really aren't laws against it. Companies are going to do whatever they're going to do in order to make an extra buck. And there's nothing we can do to change that. But oh my gosh. Okay, there was a clip in this video at the very beginning where it was like, this bottle hasn't gotten smaller, you've just gotten taller. And I thought that was really funny, but apparently this was like a real thing that they did. And now I'm, I'm shook because I didn't know.
<laughs> this is crazy. Trends is shrinkflation. Products becoming smaller over time to give you less bang for your buck, all while keeping you in the dark about it. You might think that this is just a crazy one-off example, but it's happening everywhere. Case in point, this is what a Doritos bag looked like several years ago, and this is what it looks like in 2022. Notice anything different? No? Well, that's kind of the point. But if you zoom in and enhance, and enhance there down in the corner, the old bag has a net weight of 9 and 3 quarters ounces, or 276.4 grams. The new new bag has a net weight of 9 and 1 quarter ounces, or 262 grams. That's a difference of around 5 chips per bag, and yet we're still paying the same price. Same cost, less product. Earlier this year, Frito-Lay was actually confronted about it, and they explained by saying, quote, inflation's hitting everyone. We took a little bit out of the bag so we can give you the same price and you can keep enjoying your chips. Wow, thanks there, Frito-Lay. Really doing us a solid by giving us less chips for the same price. Now, their explanation on- I mean- I think there is some logic there, though, that might help people emotionally if they don't realize that this is going on. Which, to be honest, how much of a difference does five chips make? Is that me? Like, I don't know. I don't think I would really care at that point. But to see the prices raising on almost everything, I feel like it can feel emotionally more stabilizing to have some things remain the same and yeah the reality is inflation does hit everyone and companies do still need to make money and it's not these cases where you know the economy is stable and they're just trying to squeeze us for our money but they're legitimately trying to maintain profits as a company and they have to do something about inflation as well. So I guess, you know, some people might prefer the bag to stay the same, but them to actually increase the price. But honestly, it's the same thing either way. They just haven't changed their packaging size, which can sometimes just simply amount to the fact that it may be easier for them to continue buying the same size packaging from their supplier. You never really know. And companies make these decisions for all sorts of different reasons. But at this point in time, with inflation as the backdrop, I really don't feel like companies are doing this maliciously. The surface would seem to make sense. In the US, inflation levels are now at a record high, climbing above 8% in the past few months, higher than they've been at any point in my lifetime. Everything is getting more expensive and that's gonna affect everyone, including the food manufacturers. If Doritos is paying more for the ingredients that go into the chips, then they have two options. They can charge more money for the same product or they can charge the same amount of money for less product. It seems like a fair position for them to take, but there's something that's a bit more insidious going on because most of us aren't actually consciously choosing to pay the same amount we've been paying to get less food. Chances are you've probably purchased products like this without realizing that you are getting less for your dollar. After all, are you really going to be able to tell the difference if the Doritos bag has five fewer chips in it? No, of course not. And that's by design. That's the whole point. And that's not just me saying that, it's actually coming from a research paper from Harvard Business School. Consumers are more sensitive to changes in price than they are to changes in size. Tell us that a food product's getting 10% more expensive expensive and we might reconsider whether that bag of chips or box of cereal is really worth it. But if you keep the price the same and reduce the amount of food we're getting, people are just likely keep on buying the same thing because no one truly notices the difference. For example, take this Reddit post from last year that shows two orange juice bottles that appear to be identical. But wait, zoom in and you see that the one on the left is 1.75 liters and the one on the right is 1.53. The bottle actually got 12% smaller while looking almost identical. And the truth is, most of us won't notice that at the breakfast table. After all, if you're pouring yourself a 12 ounce glass of OJ every morning, are you really gonna notice that you're only getting six and a half glasses when you used to get seven? No, they change it just enough not to trigger your suspicion. And now you're paying the same dollar amount per bottle, but that bottle's gonna have to be replaced more often, costing you more in the long run. Unfortunately, we don't always get a handy side-by-side -side comparison. And sometimes even looking at two products on the shelf isn't gonna tell you the full story. Years back, Skippy managed to change the amount of peanut butter that you were getting in a jar, while making the jars appear to be the same size. They kept the same width and the same height, but they put an indentation in the bottom. Then, after we had gotten used to- That is way common. So, packaging can look the same on the outside, but you'll notice on a lot of things that are canned or jarred, there's like, sort of a scoop 
on the bottom so that looking on a shelf you won't notice the difference but really examining it you would and yeah this is completely legal because again they disclose the weight so if it's something that you are really concerned about you can start paying attention to your weights more that being said there's not really something you can do about it because it is just a consequence of inflation and they're going to be doing this either way and there aren't really the other options on the market to choose from because if you're choosing it because it's the cheapest option it's still going to be the cheapest option even if you know that there's going to be an indentation on the bottom of your jar which is unfortunate but true that they then deepen that indentation further. No matter how sharp your eyes may be, it's pretty darn tough to keep up with the shrinkflation meta. It's the kind of thing that seems invisible, and what's the big deal with a couple ounces here and there, but giving you 12% less liquid in the bottle is the equivalent of charging you 13.6% more for the same product. Something that will definitely affect your grocery bill for the month. If they had actually raised the price, then you would have noticed, and you might have decided to buy a different product instead. But with shrinkflation, food companies are able to blind us to the reason reality that things are getting more expensive. So how do you avoid falling victim to all this? For one thing- Yeah, that was kind of the segue I was about to make. <laughs> if you want to avoid falling victim to this, most grocery stores have like the price per unit, which essentially will tell you how much you're paying per ounce of a product, which is what I tend to go off of because you know, I'm cheap, <laughs> but <laughs> it is, the best way to determine between products, which one's actually giving you the most bang for your buck. Be on the lookout anytime the shape of the packaging changes. For example, take a look at these two boxes of Cinnamon Toast Crunch. It's almost as if they tried to hide the fact that the box on the right is smaller by making it slightly taller. But if we pay attention to what really matters, the numbers, we can actually see that the box on the right only has 532 grams of cereal compared to the other box with 547. Sometimes companies will try to disguise the change by labeling the new packaging as new look, but that's usually just disguising the shrunken size with marketing hype. Luckily, grocery stores usually offer a useful tool, the price tag. When you're looking at a price tag, it's tempting to focus on the big number that you see up front, the one that says that you're paying $2.99 for a jar or $5.48 for a box, but ignore that. Instead, focus on the amount that you're paying per ounce or per unit. For one thing, that's going to help you find the better deals by buying the container that's cheapest per ounce. But more importantly, you'll start to notice when that number starts to creep upward, even when the big number displaying the price of the item seems to stay the same. But you know what? Even that isn't enough sometimes. Take this example from astute reddit user has anyone seen my mom who discovered that Aldi's tikka masala simmer sauce has actually been watering down their product to the point where a fourth cup serving now contains 50 calories of food instead of the usual 60. On the surface it looks like the portion size has gone up now it's 70 grams instead of 60 grams but the jar has gone from seven servings per container to six. How's that for confusing labeling? I mean that right there is the reason I tend not to use serving sizes when crunching the numbers for the show just like we talked about last week. So if you crunch the numbers out the jar on the left is giving you around 7 servings at 60 calories or 420 calories worth of food while the jar on the right is giving you 6 servings at 50 calories or 300 calories worth of food. A whopping 29% less food despite the fact that the jar actually looks taller due to all the water that they just added. And we know for a fact that they're watering it down. You can tell that they just added water because the ingredients list has to list them in order of quantity. And the jar on the left lists tomato as the first ingredient while the jar on the right lists water as first, a head of tomato, for what was supposed to be the same product. But hey, who's actually gonna go and read the fine print, right? Business practices like the- That one is a lot more concerning to me and I feel like should be more consuming to us as consumers in general because that really strays more along the lines of adulteration or misbranding, which is the kind of thing that a company can get reprimanded for. And they would have to take their adulterated or misbranded products off the market because it is a very serious thing when consumers think they are buying one thing and they're actually buying something else or if they are tainting it in essence by putting in something that really doesn't belong there. In this case, water, so it's fairly harmless, but intentionally bulking your product with anything, harmless or not, can be adulteration and unless this company has a great reason for doing this they could have some fairly big consequences for doing it 
I'm really wondering in this case why this hasn't been called out. I'm not super familiar with the sauce in question, which water is a common ingredient in sauces. So that may be where it's a bit harder to hold them accountable for this. But I see this as a food scientist and I really think like adulteration. So it may be something that the company could be reprimanded for. These are why consumer watchdog groups are so important. One of my favorites is mouseprint.org, which is full of all kinds of examples showing how sun-made raisins, which used to be 22.5 ounces in a container, now gives you 20 ounces of dried fruit. How bars of soap have gotten 20% smaller. The best, though, are the toilet paper examples, which is like doing algebra on steroids. One mega roll equals four regular rolls, and each of those regular rolls is two ply, so how much toilet paper are you really getting? Well, doesn't matter. Any way you slice it, it's less a Across the board. We're going from 264 sheets to 244. It's enough to overwhelm you. And you see, that's the point. The other point, though, is that the sizes never go back up. It'd be one thing to shrink products in order to reduce costs during times when expenses are high, like now when the food industry is still recovering from production shortages, but the problem is they never bounce back. There is never a return to normalcy. I mean, why would there be? If you have no problem paying the same amount for less product and you don't notice it, why should they suddenly make the sizes bigger again? Instead, they stay small. They settle into a new normal before, hey, you know what? It's time to shrink again. Take, for instance, the toilet paper example that I just talked about. Consumer Reports has been tracking the information on toilet paper brands since 2009, only to find that the sheets have been getting smaller and smaller, while the rolls have been getting shorter and shorter, reducing the amount of paper that you're getting by over 20%. Again, you are getting 20% less product than what you were paying for a few years prior, and there is nothing that you can do to stop it. Or is there? You see, the answer is to not let them get away with it. When you see packaging getting smaller to hide the fact that the products are getting more expensive, call companies out on social media. At a minimum, you'll be informing your fellow consumers, and if companies actually start to face significant backlash for it, it'll force them to start being more honest in their business practices. Public shaming has been proven to work when it comes to shrinkflation. Mondelez is the owner of Toblerone, and back in 2014, they reduced the weight of their bars by 25%. Literally a fourth of the product disappeared by adding more space between each piece, but then the public started to call them out on it, and they reversed the decision two years later. So it can be done. That, my friends, is why this is one of those instances when hashtag activism can actually make a difference. The reason companies have gotten away with this for so long is that we've been in the dark about what's really happening, but now there are whole subreddits dedicated to tracking these sorts of product changes. So stay informed, share that information with others, and call out the businesses that you see doing this with their shiny new packaging. If not, the products aren't going to be the only thing shrinking. Your wallet it will as well. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. Yeah, that's something I've thought about a lot actually is like, how will products kind of grow again? Because you can only make products so small before it's just sort of, you can't shrink it more. It really wouldn't make sense to. But but that is a very excellent point because we do have a lot more power as consumers now with social media because although in the past you could write to companies or you could write to the government about companies, you can directly interact with companies in a more public way now that really puts the heat on them when these things happen. So if you do find something that bothers you, like absolutely hold them accountable in your own way as a consumer because it is the most likely way to draw attention both for other consumers and for the company to actually do something about it. But yeah, this was a very enjoyable video to react to. Let me know if you have other videos you want to hear my spiels on and we'll see you next time.